Three years ago, Gabrielle Klinglin was making $18,000 a year working at Starbucks, trying to support himself and his girlfriend, making, what is that, like $12 an hour. Fast forward three years, and he's had two successful exits, one for a seven-figure amount of money, and he was the operator behind both of those brands. But what I didn't know until I recorded this session with him was that one of those businesses was drowning in half a million dollars in debt before he came on and helped turn the company around. And what turned the company around was Gabe focusing on two things, getting really good product reviews and doing profitable product launches. And Gabe talks all about those two things in my conversation with him today. Now, this is a very tactical conversation about how he turned a company around and had a seven-figure exit as a result of doing two things extremely well. But what really attracts me to Gabe and makes me want to work with Gabe and has prompted me to make offers to Gabe to work together is the fact that Gabe always leads with giving a ton of value. So in this conversation, he gives away the playbook for how they built these businesses. But you'll notice that he always starts with the intent of giving more than he takes. So I love working with this guy. We just had Gabe create, help us update a course inside of our members area. It's called Profitable Product Launches. It's how we structure launches in a way that are virtually guaranteed to have profitable, successful launches. We talk a little bit about that strategy in this conversation, but we recorded a full training together that's free for our members inside the 1%. And our guarantee to everybody inside the 1% is if you go through the trainings that we have for you, if you go through the roadmap and you finish out the year and you haven't had a $10,000 a month, we'll just buy your business from you for $10,000. And you'll hear Gabe say, yeah, I mean, this stuff works so well. If you don't make like at least $10,000 doing what we talk about, something went very, very wrong. And I think you'll agree after you hear us talk through the strategy that this stuff just works. It works now. It works well. It works for every niche. And it's happening now inside of the community. So whenever you're ready to get off the sidelines and start your road to $1 million and build a business that you're really proud of, something that is adding value to the world. And you listen to this conversation with Gabe and myself and you're like, I wanna work with this team. I wanna work with these coaches. I wanna be mentored on my path to a million dollar business. Come join us at capitalism.com slash one. And in this call, you're gonna hear exactly how Gabe turned a business around from half a million dollars in debt to having a seven figure exit in just three years. Enjoy. Got it. All right, yeah. Gabe Klingman, good to see you, man. How the H are you? Dude, so freaking well, man. So freaking good. well. How are I'm very you, glad. How are you feeling? I'm I'm feeling, dude, I was so sick last week. And it it just is like the contrast of oh, I feel good. I can be grateful for feeling good. I am ready to go. I'm I feel really good today. Now I want to make sure that I get your uh your your credentials correct. Cause I brag about you all the time. I want to make sure I'm not lying when when uh, when I brag about you. Yep. You you've been a part of two exits. Right, and we'll we'll call them family exits because they were sure, family yeah. businesses. Yeah. But you were Definitely. you were manager of operations for those two exits and oversaw the growth and the operations. And you were the integrator behind a crazy idea person like myself. Is that, that is that is a exactly, fair summary? That is exactly right. Um, on top of that, the uh, I spent almost a decade touring with bands and creating music, and I was the integrator for that. Um, one of my best friends, Cody DeGraff, he's the like visionary. I work so well with visionaries. He's one of the best I know. But you pair him with me as the integrator, it worked great. Great. So, so us crazy idea people need Gabe's in order to make any of our crazy ideas actually happen. Otherwise, they just bounce around. They bounce around in our head. Now, I, I believe you had two seven-figure exits. Is, is that correct? Um, that is not correct. One seven-figure exit. Okay. Yeah. The other one and wasn't. The one was a little bit smaller. Yeah. Okay, cool. But the most recent one was a pretty sizable, exciting, fast growing business. Would you give us yeah. like the high level overview of, of that business and the timeline it took to go from zero to exit and, and what you guys did there? Totally. So um, they started the business, I want to say it was like 2015 or 2016. Um, and they grew it up, you know, all of the ups and downs with typical, bring it to like six figures, drop it to zero, happened like four times or something ridiculous like that. Yeah. Um, but then they, 
I was working at Starbucks back in like 2018, 2019. And wow. I was, yeah, I was making 18K in a year. That's the most I ever made. And I was trying to support me and my girlfriend at the time. And like, you, you can't, you physically can't. So I went to them to, and I was like, look, do you guys have like five hours a week that you could spare? Um, of anything like I will do anything I just need some income and they're like yeah we actually almost went bankrupt uh, like two months ago because we let a few things slip through the cracks and now we owe like half a million in taxes something like that oh yeah it just casual stuff and I was like oh shit okay yeah let me uh what can I do and so you're not you weren't coming into this on the back of like a fast moving train you're coming into a company in distress and you're making 18k a year and three years ago four years yeah. ago yeah that's exactly right um the, yeah they they were in a really interesting point where they they were growing they were absolutely growing doing great things but they think they just were too um looking at growing working on the business and because they were doing that they weren't in the business as much as they needed to be and so important things started to fall through the cracks um so they brought me on for like literally five hours a week just doing basic like essentially one step up from customer service um, and they took that and we ran with that uh, just as a hired out contractor, did that for um, six months. And then we went uh, actually about a year. And then they said, look, we would, our brand manager just left. We'd like to put you in that role. We think you have the potential, you meet the qualifications, um, but we don't want to just sign you up and say, yay. And you like be terrible at it. So <laughs> over the next, yeah, over the next year, um, a year from there, we ended up just working on the role, kind of had this gradual process. Um, I took on more responsibility, my pay increased. Um, I kind of built myself into that brand manager role um, and then ended up becoming more of a, that ended up being the chief of operations for the, um, for the company uh, by the time we sold back in 2021. You know, now we're fast forwarding a little bit. You are a coach inside of the 1%. Yeah. We are, are trying to find ways to work together on brands. And we've, we've just worked out a partnership with you where we're sicking you on our brands inside the fund. Like, hey, this brand needs help. Gabe, go get them, <laughs> right? So, so basically, Gabe and I are working together right now inside of the capitalism fund where we have crazy visionaries who have great products and have top line sales. But we are, we're, we're almost using Gabe as like integrator like part-time integrator, yeah, like he like goes in, cleans up operations, help them do exactly what he did for these previous companies of taking from a place of, of revenue is grow is growing, but they don't have real systems to be a healthy, profitable business. So we've raised capital from investors. We have all this deal flow from the incubator and here in the 1%. And Gabe is coming in as integrator and running the playbook together, right? And so this is a way that we're testing our relationship. I hope to run a business with Gabe at one at, at, at some point. I hope it gets to that point. Same. So for those of you who are in the 1% or the incubator, like, this is why Gabe is doing content for profitable product launches and doing coaching inside of the 1% because like this is his expertise. And if you are a type of brand that needs capital and help, Gabe and I are tag teaming those types of brands inside of the capitalism fund. But Gabe, I want to hear... How do you turn a brand around from $500,000 in debt to having a seven figure exit in, you know, like two years? That, that's really fast. So what buttons were you pulling? What levers were you moving in order to, to make the numbers move? Yeah, totally. Um, one of the big things I think was just having someone in that role who understands um, systems. To me, that is one of the most important things. Um, when I first jumped in that role, it was um, the other business partners, the other founders who were actually operating and they could, they were doing the job, but they were very vision oriented. So just so many things were slipping through the cracks. Once you plug up those holes with the systems that I would go in and create, everything went a lot smoother. They could actually put their time and energy on growing the brand. I could, and they would say, here's where we wanna go. And I'd say, sweet, if that's where we wanna go, we have to take these next six steps in order to get there over this timeline and this is how we're gonna do it. And then I'd go implement it and it would, it would work. Um, I think the pairing of an incredible entrepreneur with a really good integrator made all of the difference. So tell us, tell us a little bit more of the nuts and bolts of that. What was it you put your attention on review getting or raising prices or uh, or 
relaunching products. What was what were the things that you focused on that were able to move the needle and get things back on track and out of five hundred thousand dollars in debt? and then onto a seven figure exit. Totally. So a big thing for us was the reviews and product launches. Um, those were the top things. Uh, we ended up launching, I think it was like four products in like a year, um, basically one a quarter. And those took off, increased the baseline revenue substantially. Um, and we got them profitable, fairly decently, all except one um, was profitable within a couple months. Um, that was huge. Being able to actually implement a process for that was massive. Um, on top of that, then reviews was the other aspect. We uh, we were able to kill it in the review game. And that, as you know, makes all of the difference. It does. On, on the Amazon platform. It does. So re reviews and doing profitable launches. Yeah. Focusing on those two things took a company from half a million in debt to being in a position to have a really nice exit. Bam. Am I oversimplifying at all? No, that, that I, there, I mean, no, I would say from a high level, that's exactly what happened. Okay. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, did you get that? Like, do you catch that? I get, there's no magic here. There's no magic fairy dust being sprinkled down. It was repeating the process that we talk about over and over really well until you had a really nice seven figure business. Gabe, I want to talk about both of those two things, the reviews and the launches. We'll spend more time on launches, but I want to talk about reviews really quickly because yeah. the brand that you sold did a better job at getting reviews of pretty much any brand I have ever seen. You, you just nailed it. You had literally tens of thousands of reviews on your best-selling product. Yeah. That is no small feat, but you did it fast. So can you break down a little bit of the process or what you focused on in order to set yourself up to be in that kind of a position? 100%. Um, we focused on really uh, like two core principles, two core lanes that when you follow and go down both of these lanes, then you'll end up getting those reviews. And it was something that we noticed not a lot of people were doing. Um, we would focus on the, um, velo or the volume of people or velocity, the amount of people that was coming through um, and then not only the amount of people, then we'd focus on giving them obscene value, the value and velocity principle is what I called it. Um, just how much value can you give this person, whether that's giving them discounts, whether that's giving them extra free products, X amount off a fall, a upsell or a downsell, or whether it's focusing on your copy and focusing on the images and making sure you're really understanding your customer and connecting with them on what their pain points are, whether it's customer service and going above and beyond for every person who leaves that negative review, which will happen. But when you get a massive amount of people coming through your system and you're giving every single one of them your top dollar in value, reviews naturally happen. Not only reviews, but positive reviews naturally happen. And I think we were willing to cut into our, and this is where you and I may differ on this, we've talked about this, but we were willing to cut into our profitability for um, like cut down that extra margin in order to get more people coming through so that the more people would come through, the more reviews we'd get and the more sales would grow in the long run. Yeah, I'm totally cool with that on one product. Yeah. You know, and, and you have one product be the one that acquires all these customers so that you can put them through a follow-up process where you're getting tons of reviews, which I know is a part of your strategy. Yeah. But Gabe, it's it's a little bit um it's a little bit vague to say like provide a lot of value. Like and that and that is a mindset, right? That is that is a mindset and the filter through which you approach the customer interaction. But what did that mean in terms of implementation? Because when, when someone buys from you on Amazon or anywhere, you're thinking about how to create as much value as possible, but how does that actually unfold in the operations of the business? Yeah, one of the biggest ways um, was, actually that's more of a mindset thing. Um, let me transition this way to get a lot more practical. We, eh, this was fun. We offered, um, someone will come buy a product and we would, without telling them we were gonna do this, they buy our product, we have like a little insert, say, hey, get a lifetime warranty by signing up here um, on joining our Manny chat list. They join it and then we mess them, we say, hey, just because, just for the hell of it, here is a, a buy one, get one for a different product or here's a 
50% off for a different product just because like we're, we didn't tell you we were going to do this. This isn't an exchange. This is purely because as a thank you. Um, that was one of the big things that we did practically. Um, another is customer service and making sure that we understand when people give you and give us a negative review, they're actually at primed at this opportunity for you to go in and create an experience, create a true experience instead of one that's just like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. That's a negative review. Let's push it away. Let's try and get it downloaded, whatever it is. It's saying, no, let's actually come meet this person where they're at. How can we create an experience and a connection with them and actually solve their problem? Because they're like, they're a real human being that had an issue. So let's see if we can solve that. Those, I think, were two of the biggest ways um, that we did it. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's a big deal looking at negative reviews as an opportunity because most people will shy away from them, avoid them. But th that also is, um, it's, it's tough for a lot of people to say, okay, how do I turn this negative experience into a positive one? How are you contacting them? How are you getting in front of them? Because Amazon can be a bit of a black box. So what did you do in operations that way? Yeah. So one of the things we would do um, is we'd comment on their reviews. Every single never negative review, we would go through and personally comment on, address their issues. Um, if anyone had like, oh, my pro the product fell apart or X, Y, and Z happened, then um, we would go and we would make sure we had all of our products batched depending on the manufacturer. So then we would go, we'd contact them uh, just by Amazon messages and say, hey, huh. we noticed this is, can you send us a picture of your batch number? We want to make sure, like we're going to refund you 100%. We want to send you a different one, but we don't want to send you one from the same batch. We want to make sure it's different. Can you send us a picture of that batch number to make just in case that was a product issue so it's not that exact? It could just be a weird batch. Um, things like that. That was one of the things we did. Yeah, so I want all of you to to listen to something that Gabe is saying, which is he led with a with a mindset. Like there there was there was something culturally inside of the company before it could be tactical. Before you could say, I sent this script or I followed up with this person in this way, there, there had to be a mindset. And that mindset was, we are going to just over give on every single person that comes through our door. And some of you hear us talk about, especially in the product launch process, which is what we'll talk about next. We talk about replying to every comment. We talk about engaging with the audience that you have. I mean, so, so many of you want results like Ryan and Gabe, and you miss the fact that, like, guys, like, I know most of your names in your businesses. Like, I, like, I have, like, I know some of your children. Some of you have been to my home, right? I do not have the biggest audience in the world. I do not, I, I have, like, I've been making content for 15 years, and I do not have the biggest audience. I have a small audience, but I know my audience. I, I engage with my audience. I like We are active with our people. So when we do a launch, it's profitable. When I say I made the world's most disgusting tasting nootropic, people go and buy it. And we run that process again. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you very much. We go and run that process on the switch customers too, right? It is a mindset first, and then it is the tactical pieces of it. And that mindset is exactly what takes you into having $10,000, $25,000 launches. Like I've told this story a few times, it's just fresh in my mind. One of our brands in the fund called Ancient Strength, very small audience. I mean, tiny, tiny audience built with him just like, grinding it out. He did have a partnership with an influencer. The influencer did like one store, like one Instagram story. So it's not like he had a ton of firepower from this influencer. He had a little bit, a little bit, but he was active with every single follower, every single email, every single reply, every single review. And when he launched, he had a $25,000 launch in five days with hardly any audience without previous experience in a competitive space. This stuff works and it works now. So let's pivot over now into talking about that product launch process because Gabe, you updated our training called Profitable Product Launches inside the 1%. We are encouraging every single person 
inside the 1% to go through this process. And we are telling new members, we're telling new members, if you go through the onboarding process of the 1%, you pick your perfect product, you build your audience in the way that we talk about, you follow the processes that Gabe's outlined in the perfect product launch. If you go through that process and over the course of your membership, if you don't have a $10,000 a month, we'll just buy your business from you for $10,000 because it just works. It just works. So if you don't have a 10K month, we'll give you a 10K month by buying your business from you for $10,000 because it you got to do the work. But if you do the work, it, it will work. So Gabe, tell us a little bit about the processes that you used in this last company for having those continual five, six figure launches on these new products that took you out of debt and got you the exit. Mm -hmm. The uh, One of the big things was the value and velocity principle. Um, that was the idea of how many people can we get through this product? Whenever we'd launch a product, that was kind of the baseline question during the launches. How many people can we get to go through this? Um, and we so would use a couple different tactics in order to do that. One, um, we would look at the market, do a really good anal analysis of the market and of our customer and really understand why are they buying? Are they buying it for this for reason A, B, or C? Understand what the market is serving, but then look at our own customer. And then we'd go through and we would address, make sure we're crystal clear on exactly what problems we're solving within the copy and within the images. Those were very important. And then we would dump, we would run PPC ads um, and we would reach out to our lists. We would do whatever we can, make sure we stand out obviously on the platform and send as many people as possible through it. Um, and that becomes the value velocity. We had a whole system set up for the value to make sure that they got exactly top-notch value, what they were looking for, plus extra, and then just see the more people we can get through this process, the better. Value velocity. So value is ensuring that the product is something your customers want. Yeah. Because if it's not, if it's not, you can try and push that rock uphill, that but you're, you're going to have a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I also want to echo something here, everybody. You've, I, I feel silly when I say this, but there's always one or two people that need to hear this. I said this from stage once and people were like, what? Um, really early in the Amazon days, I was telling people, listen, please make sure that your second product is a match for all the customers that bought product number one. And they were like, what? I, I don't just go find out what keywords are open and go sell another product. No. If you're building a brand, especially one that you want to be a seven-figure business that you're going to sell, then it has the second product and the third product need to be follow-ups to product number one. You're serving the same person. That is where the idea of serving a person originated. Because I saw all of these Amazon sellers and e-commerce entrepreneurs who were selling this product over here and then this product was looking for opportunities. And it was, no, guys, girls, listen, there's one person that you want to come back and buy from you four times. You, you, need, you need 25 people and you want them to buy from you four times. And if you do that really well, you need fewer customers, you can have higher profit margins, you'll have higher velocity of reviews, you'll have more word of mouth, you'll rank better on the platform, you'll have people who prefer you over everybody else. That's where that, that started. So it's val when he says value, Gabe is saying, make sure that that product is a fit for the people who are already paying attention to you right now. But this idea of velocity that you're saying, you are talking about volume. You're talking about how many people can we put through the system so that we can get more reviews, more testimonials, more feedback. Is that what you mean by velocity? That is exactly what I mean. Absolutely. At what point does the conversation switch from velocity to margin so that you have a profitable business that you can scale and sell? Yeah, that's the question. Um, so even within a team, we disagreed on that, to be honest. that's mm. the Yeah, that was the question. Um, I tend to, and maybe this was because I wasn't like the founders of the business. I had the mindset of, okay, let's run this as low as we can. I'm talking, let's not make any profit for as long as humanly possible. Just just scrape by. Um, and there was one other person in the um, for the team, the found, two founders. One of them was kind of like, yeah, let's do that, but maybe not as long as we can. Maybe not like two <laughs> years, because um, we did that with one product and 
that's a whole other issue. Um, but like he was like, yeah, let's maybe not do it for as long as you want. And then the other guy was like, no, let's actually do it for like 30 or 60 days and then like jack the price up. Um, so we actually had this like really healthy dialogue around yeah. that exact issue. Yeah. And, and so what did you end up like? What, what ended up working? What like, did you have a mindset and a process for that? Or was it ad hoc product for product? It was ad hoc product for product. Um, okay. What? Yeah. Absolutely, because so much of the market changed depending um, between when you find the product, when you launch the product, 90 days after you launch the product. Um, at one point, we had launched a, uh, a helmet and the helmet, we, when we first started the process, like we got it custom done and when we first started the process, market was great. By the time we had launched in like 90 days after, the average value had dropped like $10 and there went our entire margin. Um, and so we just decided to run that as like a base break even for as long as we could. Um, but then a different product we had launched, which was more of like a phone bag type of style, we decided to um, keep it at a, a little over break even. So we're actually making a little profit and run that pretty much right out of the gate like that. Um, and then as we got like hundreds and I think we're upwards of a thousand reviews within that first year, then we like up the price a couple more. Um, a couple more dollars and like it sold great. So it was much more of an ad hoc process depending on the product I, in the market. I'm just getting so excited hearing you talk about this, partially because that's a business decision where you it's hard to provide value if you're out of business, right? So like, like you, you have to run profitably in order to continue to create this value. But I love this mindset of how long can we just give to our customers and, and just like lay on the sword for as long as possible because no one else is willing to do this. Like nobody else is willing to do this. For example, like I, um, in my camera, I can see the reflection of my book, which is sitting over here, right? When people ask me, what was your marketing strategy for 12 months, 1 million? It sold over 120,000 copies, which is insane, right? That makes me 12% of my way to my goal. I want to sell a million copies. So it might take me 10 years. It's okay. Two years in, I've sold 120,000 copies. Tim Ferriss hasn't talked about it yet. So, you know, I haven't hit the big spike yet. But they asked me, what was your marketing strategy for writing this book and I, or for selling this book? I said, my marketing strategy was to write a great fucking book. Uh, and I didn't really think beyond that. It was how much can I leave on, like leave in between the covers to, to make somebody just absolutely love it. And I am here to tell you, ladies and germs, that makes business so much more fun. And it is really hard to do that when you're operating from a place of scarcity and what you can extract from the marketplace. I did a video on the YouTube channel. This it was posted yesterday. We were, I was talking about how when you're operating from this place of trying to extract from the marketplace, you are always in lack. But if you can flip it over into, I just want to create and give to a core group of people, that is when the profitable product launch becomes kind of natural because there's so few people willing to do it. There are so few people who are thinking about the customer. Think about what they can get from the customer. Go ahead, Gabe. I was going to say, can I jump in here? So uh, yeah. I was thinking about, I watched that video this morning and it reminded me of this story, very practical for my own life that I've, I don't think I've, I know I've never told you, um, but it illustrates the, the difference in that mindset and how that plays out so well. So um, back in 20, uh, I think it was like 2015, 2016, somewhere in that range, I decided I had just started my one e-commerce brand um, and I was like, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I was like, cool. I started this. I'm None of us do. I still don't know, Gabe, yeah. just so you know. <laughs> right? I was like, okay, I'm going to teach people how to scale from six figures to seven figures. Cause I realized there was a huge difference from a six figure business and a seven figure business. So I, over the course of like two years, I read over a hundred books a year over the course of years. I went through every course I could. I digested everything that you released in those years. Um, do you so many other people like I was obsessed. And then I went and I started doing these cold outreaches and my whole goal was how can I make money? That was my entire goal. I was like, here's yeah. a gap. How can I make money? I haven't, don't have the experience of growing from six to seven, but I'll find the knowledge and then I'll teach people how to do it and I'll make money. Um, and I did 
I put like a year of my life into that and got zero results, like embarrassingly zero results. Thousands of people individually messaging and nothing, complete crickets. So then that actually, that song so bad, it put a whole bad taste for the industry in my mouth. It was rough. This doesn't and work. It just, uh, yeah. It, it's <laughs> so a bunch of scam people. artists. Oh my God, the amount of messages, man. You, you would know. Um, <laughs> and then so fast forward now, what, four or five years? I do exactly that. I help people scale from like six to seven mm. plus figures. But my entire mindset is completely different. It took me changing from, okay, how can I just make money? Here's an opportunity, let's dive in, to how can I serve the people in front of me? And that's what got me to do them scaled that then now to here with capitalism and literally doing the same work and now whenever i get on these one-on-one -on -one calls with the people in the incubator and the people in my mastermind i get so excited i had scheduled one hour call i was on for over two and a half hours a couple <laughs> days ago um just because we were getting so deep and going so great into it it was incredible it's a comp when you have that mindset shift everything changes yes yeah so let me well, i'm gonna i'm gonna piggyback off uh, that story with a story about Gabe, which is Gabe and I are, I believe our first interaction was when you did a training for the 1% about getting reviews. Yeah. And that, tra that training is in your members area. It's about how they get thousands of reviews on products. It was a full in-depth training with where he went through like his, his processes that's in your members area. If you want to go through it. And that was from, totally should check it out. It's really good. It's, it, it was from a little bit ago now, but I think that was our first interaction and Accurate, Gabe yeah. showed up and he, and he just, gave to the community, sent us a thank you afterwards, right? And then after he had his exit, we started communicating again. We noticed how much he gave inside of the Profitable Product Launches course and that training and how much he gives to this community. And with that mindset of just giving and giving and giving, we're having conversations like, like how, do we, how do we work with this guy more? Like, how, how do we, but now like internally, we're going like, how do we, like, how do we, how do I, I'm saying, how do I partner with this guy on a brand? How do I bring him in front of my community more? How do I bring him onto a podcast? How do we make Gabe a coach inside of the gold? Like, how can we get, give him in a position to achieve everything that he wants to achieve? And he hasn't asked for any of that. It's that he is in this mode of selflessly giving so much that that opens up the doors for everybody around him to say, how do we support this guy? That mindset, that mindset allows you to win at whatever it is that you're doing. That mindset is what allows you to go build the audience or goes a lot and allows you to have the profitable product launch, have the $10,000 a month, the $100,000 a month, that mindset, that's, that is the opening for all the hacks and the tricks and the tactics that you are prioritizing. They don't work without that mindset. You have to have that first. Can I Gabe? Jump in right in yes, there? please. Yeah, to go piggyback right off of that as well. Um, something else that I do here in, or I offer in the capitalism, but something else that I just do on the side for me is a bunch of emotional healing stuff. I go deep in like, and I think I've talked with you a little bit about it, but I go deep yeah. in like healing people's generational stuff, their triggers, limiting beliefs. Like that's my jam. I was put on this earth to do that. And so one thing I've been doing just to accentuate what you're saying about how important that mindset is, is and to make this really practical because you can look at it and say okay mindset is great but like you guys had like a seven figure business how does that <laughs> actually work when you're like just starting like yeah. for me i do these one-on-one -on -one calls with people in the um capitalism i'll get on a call and we'll talk and we'll talk business for two and a half hours and then at the end i'm like look um i know how much emotion affects your business i know how important having an emotional life and emotional health is important so i offer this completely free to you guys um, I'll get on one-on-one -on -one call and like we will work through that shit in a whole different way than you've experienced. We'll release that just like this. Um, and most of the people I've offered have taken me up on that. And then every single person that has taken me up on it has referred me to like four or five people. And then every referral has referred me to others. So just <laughs> to show you, I'm not in this, in doing that to make money. I'm not in there to be like, okay, how can I monetize this? What I'm in there is to say, how can I give value to these people in front of me? And when people see that difference from a very practical standpoint, they see and they say, okay, how, let me share this with other people. I got value. I want to be important in other people's eyes. So how can I share this with my friends so that they look at me better? And then you literally just grow your audience organically instantly. It's a whole That's different right. process. That's right. It unfolds so fast when you have that mindset, because again, so few people are willing to do it.
because and and people are craving that like that guys that is capitalism it is creating more value than you expect to get and all the value starts to show up that's it i want to talk about the actual i want i want you to do a brief sales pitch and i'll back you up on this for all of the members who have not gone through profitable product launches do I want it. you to talk about what you created in there, yep. and then I'll sexy it up a little bit by bragging about you. Oh, I appreciate it. Uh, so what we created is the step-by-step -step process on how to go from zero, right? So you've already, if the only assumptions, and I tell this in the first video, the only assumptions that I have is like you have a product, right? And you understand your audience and you understand the transformation that they're looking for, right? People aren't buying a product. People are buying a transformation. People are buying a new state, a new identity when they buy your product. They're not buying a water bottle. They're buying something to make them healthier. They're buying something to give them more energy, whatever that is. So you understand you, you have your product and you understand who your audience is and what transformation that's happening. And we have tons of trainings on those that you can go through before picking your perfect product, building a Facebook community, all that stuff already in the um, community. So once you have that, then we walk you through a step by step on how to literally launch to these people i mean these this is stuff that i have used over the years and it's stuff that i have learned like i said earlier i had read in like two years uh 100 books a year for two years at this point it's been like four and years and i've read about 500 books in the last like four years um i am yeah i am i read a book this week and i was really impressed with myself but please go on <laughs> i am obsessed <laughs> with learning obsessed and it's to me like that's where I grow and I so much of what I'll learn, I'll go out and apply and make sure it works. And what I teach in this profitable product launch is how to apply. You get the best from everyone. I took stuff from, I don't know if I can drop names here, but I'm going to yeah, anyway. Please. Uh, Russell Brunson. We took stuff from um, a lot of the community here who have done these actual product launches. Um, we have the swipe files in there so you can see tactically exactly what they did in their emails. We tell you what e what type of emails to send, how often, what type of copy you should be writing, what does a landing page, what does a squeeze page work? Like we take it down step by step. It could not be simpler. And it's all stuff that's proven to work yeah. in this space right now. Like working not when the economy was good, not when people were buying toilet paper on the internet because it was COVID, not when valuations were higher, right now what is working right now and gabe has taken what's worked in their businesses the swipes and the profitable launches from other businesses and put it into the step-by-step -step formula that he's using inside of businesses right now so we we from like a marketing perspective we have said the goal behind this training is to have a ten thousand dollar launch the only reason we put it that way is because that was the lowest barrier to entry that I knew people would believe. I, I, I know it's going to be way more than that. Like the, like the process that Gabe and our team has put together is designed to get you up, launched, and to have every product to 25 sales a day as fast as possible so that we as a community are building million-dollar businesses and pushing people through this process so that we can help you inside of the incubator and cast a vision and help you raise capital and go have you have an eight-figure exit. This is that first threshold, getting the first 10K. If you're already in business, go through this training to have your next product be much more successful than the first or the second or the third. These are the processes that will get you more reviews, that will get you higher profit margins, that will get you more loyal customers. And it's stuff that's working right freaking now.